What's up, everybody? It's Augie. First off, I'd like to say uh, thank you to the Molokai e Drug Free Movement. I wish I could be there live with you, but I promise them that I'm coming back to bring my Laugh with Aloha comedy tour. And uh, I wanted to be there live, unfortunately, because of scheduling conflict and being cast in a, a TV project. I had to, like, take off and uh, do filming this weekend. But when I got the call from the Molokai Drug Free Movement and they asked if I would be willing to come and, and speak about how drugs has affected uh, my family and myself. So I wanna share with you guys uh, from a family's member's perspective. You know, I know you guys have some awesome speaker speakers there on Molokai for you guys sharing about their own personal experience. So I want to share my side from a family member's perspective. So, you know, I grew up in uh, public housing. I grew up extremely poor. Um, nothing was ever easy for our family. And, and being from public housing... Um, I could have easily gone down that path. I'm the oldest of five brothers. I have a stepbrother who um, has been a career criminal all his life. And, um, you know, we were all raised in the same home. Uh, dad and mom taught us to try our best to be respectful. Uh, shared with us about all the dangers of, you know, drugs, um, teenage pregnancy, everything under the sun. Um, and we all have tough decisions to make, right? Uh, nothing is ever easy. And it's so easy to go down the, the wrong path. Like I said, you know, being the oldest of five, you know, we heard the same messages. But at the end of the day, you know, each one of my brothers, including myself, had um, choices. And we had um, tough decisions to make. If we're going to go down that, the road, it takes long and it's hard. And um, possibly... Because we don't know where life will take us, you know, that if we work hard, we do the things that we're supposed to do, that good things are at the end of that that run, that marathon, right? And then there's the easy path. And that path was easy to take. You know, um, I have a brother that's two years younger than me, and uh, he got involved with drugs and the lifestyle. And um, at 18 years old, he took his life. And, you know, it is one of the toughest things I think any family member can go through because you never ever imagined that you would lose your best friend and your brother, you know, you in your mind, you just think that, you know, we're going to all grow old together. We're going to kind of compete. We're going to build great memories. And when I got that call, 21 years old, knowing that my best friend, my brother, took his life because he went down the wrong path. He went down the wrong path. He started using ice, started taking drugs, started hanging around with the wrong people, and made some wrong decisions. And... um you know, our family was never, ever the same. I'm hoping that you guys are watching. It's so easy to get access to uh, things that can make you feel good for the moment. I don't know how that feels because I've never done crystal meth or any hard kind of drugs. But I've seen what it's done to my brother, some of uh, his friends, my friends, 
my family, and you know, I wish, I wish that he was here with me today. I miss my brother every, every day because we shared dreams, we shared uh, goals, you know, and it's tough. Just thinking about what he could have done if he just stayed on the path, the hard path. You know what his children would look like. What kind of uncle he would be to my kids. You know how successful he would have become. But because you know he decided that drugs was gonna be the way for him to escape. You know he's not here with me and my brothers. And mom, and it breaks my heart. So whenever I get an opportunity to share, right, to share, and and tell you guys that there's people that concern and they care and they love you guys. And sometimes, you know, getting high for fun is not worth it. Getting high because everybody else is doing it. Not worth it. So if you're battling right now and you're challenged, know that there's people that care about you. There's movements like the one we're doing today that's willing and ready to reach out to you. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, the best exercise for the heart is lifting one another up. And I hope that this short message maybe inspire you, challenge you to make tough decisions, but make right decisions, good decisions, decisions that you know are going to affect everybody around you. And if you know more somebody to talk to, reach out. Reach out. Talk to somebody today. I want to thank uh, Molokai Jug Free Movement for letting me be a part of this. So attached to this, right after I'm done saying thank you, I have a short video. Uh, hopefully this will make you laugh. And again, I promise Molokai I'm coming to bring Laugh with Aloha to you folks and raising some money for the Molokai Jog Free Movement. One day we will, we will win this fight. And, uh, and I pray it comes really soon. And it's because of movements like this one uh, are very hopeful and optimistic. So with that, uh, enjoy my comedy. And I look forward to seeing you guys live real soon. Have a great day. And thank you Molokai for letting me share. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's press conference. I am Press Secretary Cowrose Rice. And this morning, we have a luau and the group Kapena performing for lunch today. Before the president comes out, our Vice President of America would like to make a statement. I must remind you that our Vice President does not speak English, and I will be translating for him. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States, Vice President Mondog. Kagayan kang kakabsat, kablawan kayo man, tinaimbag, ngal daw yo amin. Diyos siya ngina, mabuhay! Thank you, Vice President. That's very nice. Vice President wishes you a very happy day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Please rise as I welcome the President of the United States, 
President Junior Ulufali. to the press conference. You know the reason why you guys vote for me? Because you know I come with action. I want to make some cuts right now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the Secret Service because my staff and myself, no need. We can take care of business on our own. Go home. You're fired. Ow. OK, let's get to business over here. Let's take some questions. Let's do it. Jack Guest, ABC News. President Ufu Ale. Hey, Ulu Fale. Ulu Fale. Ufale. What is your position on Katrina and Rita? Hey, I never fool around with them. I am not that kind of man. I do not fool around. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't lie. If I say I don't do that kind of stuff, I don't do that kind of stuff. I, ain't no, I don't do that kind of stuff, right, boys? I don't do that kind of stuff. Come on. President, President Ulufali, Philip Palangi. Palangi. Yeah, with the weather chair. Oh, I like that name. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's referring to hurricanes, Katrina and Rena. What's the hurricane? Position? Why everybody like blame me for a hurricane? Uh, see, President Ulufali is responsible for that uh, greenhouse effect. It's not my fault. If the wind is coming, the wind is coming. What are you going to do? Huh? You see the wind is coming two weeks before the thing land? Run! Land! Don't stay over there! I live on an island. If the wind is coming, we don't have no place for go. We gotta hold on to a coconut tree. Ah! Ah! Hold on, hold on. You guys can run. Hey, hey, don't take responsibility for yourself. If the wind is coming, run. Don't stay over there. Oh, rescue me, rescue me. Yeah, yeah. next question. Scarlett Evans, Fox News. President Ali Fali. Ulu Fali. Yeah, okay, what is your question? What are your views regarding gays in the military? Let the Mahus in the military. The, mili the Mahus can fight. When I was growing up, we have a Mahu in careful housing. His name was Michelle, but his real name is Michael. But I used to go, Michael, and it's, hey, my name is Michelle. And he beat me up, he can fight. Send the Mahus to the military, they can fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Yeah, go ahead. Penelope Marshall, Ebony Magazine, President Ule Fale. Oh. Okay, that was close. Go. Is it true that the people say that you hate African American people? It's not true. Look at it. Look at it. Huh? My brother? There you go. Hey, hey, look. How can I cannot hate African American? We get the same kind of hair. Look, we get the same kind of hair. Hey, come on. I love everybody. Inside our skin, it's the same color. Red. Red. Different color people, but inside it's red. Next time anybody say that, I hate. I'm going to go over there and slap them in the mouth. Salapu. But, ooh, that's not good. Everybody happy. We live in peace. Okay. Hurry up. Hurry up. Next question. Yeah. Yes, uh, Maria Mendoza from CNN. Um, President Ulu uh, Fale. Ulu Fale. Say it with me. Ulu. Ulu Fale. Together. Ulu Fale. Fale. Good. Anyway, sir, back to business. Um, in your administration, what is the biggest platform for you this year? It's drugs. My staff is, is made up of some of them is a former drug addict. And so my, my heart is about the drug. I want to get rid of all the drug in America. Drugs is not good. Drugs is killing America and the kids. Let me tell you, write this down. D is for dummy. If you take the drug, you are a dummy. You are a dummy for taking the drug. You, the word R. R is for radical. When you take that drug, you get radical. You like fight everybody, fight everybody. Fight everybody. I mean, that's not good. Okay, you, when you take the drug, you become ugly. Do you want to be ugly? Nobody wants to be ugly. That's what happens when you take a drug. And G is for crazy. When you take that drug, you become crazy. Say no to drug. Stay away from the drug. Okay, last and final question because a uh, Kapena is waiting. Koi, you, Polo Head Guy, what is your question? Yeah, Kalvehi Ikaika Uamau Ke'e O Ka'ani Kapono, Tucker, from KGMB News. Yeah, nice name. Yes, we have been spending billions of dollars in Iraq and fighting the war in Afghanistan. What is your administration going to do about the deficit? It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah, I 
Hello? Ufi, this is Tuna. Tuna Ulfale. This is Ulfale. Hey, Mr. President, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how's the family? How's Nifankas? <laughs> they were just asking about you the other day. <laughs> well, uh, I have a question to ask you. Uh, what is a uh, deficit? Yeah. How are we going to bring down a deficit? We're going to have a holy, holy chicken sale. <laughs> Everybody in America will buy one pot of sausage, Zippy's benefit chili tickets. We're going to bring a bunch of town. God bless America. Give me no more questions. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You know, I have two openly gay sons. You guys saw one of them. But for six months during the election period, I had to hear these guys come home and tell me stuff like, Dad. Dad. If Trump wins, we're moving. <laughs> He's taking away our bathrooms. I'm like, where well, you been making shishi all these years, dummy? <laughs> and by the way, I would be okay. I would be okay if like somebody that looked like my son came in for make shishi next to me. I'll be okay. I'll be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. President. I'll be okay with that. No, but I had to hear these two guys, my two gay sons, that means I'm like, if Trump wins, we're moving. <laughs> Hawaii Theater, you know how exciting my house was election night? <laughs> Trump, 250. Holy smokes, he could win. Trump. 260. I was packing my kids' clothes already. <laughs> I said, the Mahu's out of my house tonight. Oh, the Mahu's all gone tonight. Bye. <laughs> Trump wins. <laughs> oh, look at that. You're just playing. Yes. Hey, a deal is a deal. Get the hell out of my house. You guys, 30, 26. Get the hell out of my house. Dad, come on. You're just playing. I'm not playing. No, these guys. Oh, bro, they're in my house. It's like the whole cast of Glee in my house. Just... I'm trying to watch TV. I know, I know. Like Bo, my son Bo, I tell him, why you gotta be extra gay? Why, why can't you just be gay? Why you gotta be extra? I'm like, what are you, like the peacock of all the gays? You know, and he goes, Whoo, look at me, everybody. Look at me. Why you gotta be that guy? I love them both to death. I love my kids to death. I've been mean, saying this for the longest time. I don't care. It's my kids. I'm gonna protect my kids. But hey, sometimes I don't understand them. That's all. Coming out of the closet. I'm coming out of the closet. I was like, go back in the closet. <laughs> you know what I had 15 years ago? I had the gay, the gay, the gays all mad at me. The gays, I'm like, they get mad. Like he's teasing, he's making fun. <laughs> this is 15 years ago when it was still kind of ooh. There's not stuff you should be talking about. Right, like he's making fun, he's teasing. <laughs> then they saw my son and went, oh my God, he's not lying. <laughs> Let's embrace him. <laughs> Dude, I, had, I had uncles and like big brothers come up to me going, bro, what are you gonna talk that? Bro, what are you gonna talk about that for me? Yes, talk about that kind of stuff, bro. Nobody like know that kind of stuff. Oh, bro, we gotta talk about that kind of stuff. Uncomfortable. Make me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> this is 15 years ago. Let me just tell you guys how much time has changed. Now I get cops, I get construction workers, they walk up to me. Okay, what's up, bro? I'll tell you something. What's up? 
Hey, my boy, my Hutu. All right. <laughs> me know how they dance. Me know how they dance. It's all right. And then apparently now, I'm like the gay expert. <laughs> because that routine apparently helped a lot of guys go, well, you know, hey, we got to love all kids. You know, we got to pass judgment on my kids. You know? And that's all. No, but get guys, get people ask me, okay, okay, how you know your kid's gay? <laughs> like, like, like I'm Dr. Phil or something, you know? <laughs> okay, how you know your kid's gay? Uh, I, I don't know, watch how they run. Because <laughs> when boy was small, I watch how he run, like, oh yeah, ah. I'm like, why are you flapping your wings for? You don't have to flap your wings. Run like a boy! Run like a boy! No, my God, no, 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 no. I'm like, get over here, son. Get over here. And watch how they take picture. Watch how they take picture. When I was in sixth grade, I took picture. <laughs> I grew up camp for housing. You gotta look at her. I'm gonna give that prison eye, the prison eye. <laughs> you guys get down? Hey, you guys get friends? Who go to jail to come back? <laughs> oh, you blink or what? But you blink. <laughs> they take pictures, they're like, you know, guys. What the, what is this? <laughs> like, how, how, what kind of picture this? What is that? Who, who does that? <laughs> Me and brother, we eat on hot dog. You know, we eat hot dog, we eat. Oh, good age hot dog. I can't eat hot dog with my son. <laughs> you know what I'm looking at? Oh my God. Eat the hot dog! Eat the hot dog! You're making me feel uncomfortable! Eat the hot dog! And that's the long Costco one, so take 10 years. Oh, a big long Costco one. Eat the hot dog. Stop playing with the hot Stop playing with the hot dog, you. We're on church picnic. Can you please eat the hot dog? And I try. I try to put positive reinforcements in my kid. Even though they are uh, adults, I try. You know, because I like know what's going on in their life. I like know. You know, like, hey, what you doing? What you doing with your life? Sit down. Stop dancing. Sit, sit, sit there. <laughs> what you doing? What you going to do? What you, uh, I'm going to be a hairstylist. OK. What about you? Fashion designer. Uh, anything else? Flight attendant, okay, okay. Jamba juice, all right, go ahead. Bro. Why gotta be in a car? Like, you guys can do like, like regular jobs, you know. Nobody, you know, like, you, you, you always flipping your hands like this, right? Huh? Why you not be on bull rider? Why you not be on champion bull rider? Since you're like flapping, you can you be awesome, yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. Like, come on, son, let's go, boy. Yes, yeah, son. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's my son. You can be a construction worker. Grab that jack hammer and go off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I come home one day in my house, I pay my cable, I pay my electric, and these guys just sleep all day. They stay up all night, go scarlet, and then sleep the whole day. I come home 10 o'clock, they still sleep, oh my God, oh my God. Wake up! Go outside, cut grass or something. Put on your high shots and rock them. Just rock them, come on. Just, oh my God. 
do something in this house. My other boy, Taj. I come home one Halloween. I open the door. I saw it. I don't know. It looked like Marilyn Monroe. But he no more shirt. So I walk in. He's like, ah! You know what I mean, Chi-Chi's? What you doing that for? I've been wiping your ass since you were small. You're like, ah! I'm just a little embarrassed. <laughs> what are you embarrassed for? You know I support you, boy. I'm your dad. Oh my God. <laughs> you gonna be my who? Huh? Listen, you gonna be my who? You be the best dad, my who, on this island. You understand me?